Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at Cardano and seeing how it is faring during the crypto dip. So if you like the content, make sure you hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. Join me on Instagram for daily Q and A's and also Twitter for crypto news. All right, let's dive in. Now for today's Cardano update, we're gonna look at Cardano against Bitcoin, ETH, Binance, DOT, Solana, some of the major smart contract players, of course. We want to gauge how well Cardano is doing uh, it, during this crypto crash, the little crypto crash that we've been seeing over the last few days. The major thing we're looking at here is 50% levels. Reason being is GAN, of course. GAN said the most profitable retracement is 50% retracement. This is how you calculate it. But remember, the area around 50% is a danger zone because the price can keep going and become a full-fledged reversal around there, in which case you lose all the gains. But it's the best place to re-enter an existing trend with an exit plan just below using a stop-loss order in case it doesn't work. Now, if you're just looking to hold this long-term, then it doesn't really matter so much for you guys with the stop-losses. But of course, you do want to protect your gains and also look at some way of dollar cost averaging in possibly. So check out GAN and this 50% rule. So that's why we look at the 50% quite often because it tends to work out reasonably well. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to pull up dead on the 50%. It's just a bit of a guide as to when a good time to buy is based on, of course, GAN rules. Rather than buying every single dip and you run out of funds, it's nice to have a plan. So 50% is around the dollar 26. The other thing I note here is we are getting higher lows. So basically higher swing bottoms, which again is another GAN rule. Bottom, bottom, another bottom. And just from yesterday, we've seen this low pull up at the moment. Doesn't mean we're going to hold it, but overall that's a good sign. As some of the other cryptos are breaking down, they're getting lower lows. And that's obviously a sign of weakness. At the moment, we are finding around that $1.80 through to $1.90, a bit of resistance above. If I break this down onto a daily, so we're just looking at it in a smaller time frame from the high to this current low, then we can see that the 50% has pulled the market up a few times now. We did manage to break through it a couple of times, but we're still under it. So this is part of the patience game. As I've talked about many times before on the channel, this dip probably will last longer than the previous dips that we saw of a few days to a few weeks, but I don't expect it to be anything like the major bear market of three years. We've talked about it with Bitcoin, potentially a three, six, nine month sort of dip beneath the old all time highs. It doesn't mean it's going straight down. And I suspect we'll probably do similar for these other major cryptocurrencies. ADA USD. So this is just looking at time frames. So this is a couple of ideas I have in mind just after measuring this. This looks like a web. I get it. But the point here is that we're just measuring major peaks. So, so I'm just looking for patterns here. We've got 60 weeks, high to high, 61, low to low, 66, low to low, low to high. We've got another 61 weeks, 62 weeks here. So there are numbers that are just continuing to pop up. So all I've done then is just measure 60 weeks from major points. Brings me out in around mid-November and also some of the shorter time frames that brings us out into around mid-July. So it's quite a vast time frame, but it's just to let me know that I need to be patient at this point. I don't believe we're going to be shooting straight up to new all-time highs and uh, running off to five bucks anytime soon. If we do do that, then I see that as a much weaker bull market. A stronger bull market is going to keep us in these ranges, whether it's a dollar, two dollars, dollar eighty, keep us in these ranges for a longer period of time so that we can accumulate, reaccumulate, strengthen the base, and then take off. Speaking of patience, I've got this little book here, Richard Wyckoff, Studies in Tape Reading. That's just a small piece. Nerve and Patience, page 17. He must have the nerve to stand a series of losses, persistence to keep him at the work during adverse periods, self-control to avoid overtrading a phlegmatic disposition to ballast and balance him at all times. So basically to be strong and unemotional during periods like this. Have nerve, have patience. That's pretty much what it comes down to once you've got a plan. Cardano Bitcoin looking reasonably strong. I'm not saying we're going to break to new uh, recent highs. Uh, and of course, we've got to look at the 50%. We could come back to the 2700 level. 
we are seeing volume start to dry up and that's what we've been expecting. So it's nothing new to us. If we see the volume begin to dry up, then potentially we start to see a few falls. If Bitcoin started to move up, then I would expect Cardano to drop against the BTC value. But of course, a USD value is going to do something different. It may increase. That's just to show that there is still strength in Bitcoin. But right now, we just see Cardano playing around at the highs. And the other level here that is starting to find some support at is a previous top back in April 18. This is still just early days, keeping an eye on it. Overall, looking reasonably okay. Cardano, ETH, you can see here we've just hit our 50% on the, uh, the downside. I don't think we're going to come back all the way to these lows, but we just want to continue to track this. So if I bring this to this high around here, just to give us a calculator, we just want to calculate the 50% zone. Somewhere around the 53,000 or 54,000 could be a, a little pullback area. So if I saw it drop that far, all I'm really doing here is to just know that markets can do this and remain bullish and not to fear a dip from where we are back to the 50% zone, which is about 13%. Maybe we see it come back to the FIB level of 61%. So 15 to 20% not a big deal at the moment. Still looking reasonably okay against Ethereum after putting in that high in February. ADA Binance is also making a comeback. It has come back from major, major lows. And I think this may be the leg of uh, Cardano showing strength against Binance. I think Binance has had its run for now and we'll probably see a little bit of strength in that. So these are all sort of lining up that Cardano looks okay on the USD doesn't mean I think it's going to highs. It's just potentially holding its ground. It looks okay on Bitcoin. It looks okay on ETH. It looks okay against Binance. This is against DOT. Now, this is showing a lot stronger signs. It's it's broken through highs. It's come back and just pausing at these levels now. I think it probably start to pull up here. Maybe we see a little bit more of a pullback, bit of a consolidation. Maybe DOT has a bit of a run with all of the parachains coming out and you slipping over to Kasama. It just depends on the narrative. But even so, it's like I said, you know, looking at our little paragraph here, nerve and patience. If I see those things happen, I'm prepared for it to come back 20 or 30% against DOT or DOT takes a run and ADA doesn't do anything. You know, we start to think, well, what's going on? That's looking okay in my book. Market cap ADA. This thing is looking all right. Again, it could slip back into these zones between 30 and 50 billion market cap. The areas that I'm looking for to give us some signs of strength is to start breaking above the levels of around 60 billion because that's the last high that we have had on a macro time frame. Remember, we're looking at all of these on a weekly, not on a daily chart. We want to look for long-term trends. Now, we're just going to measure high to the low just as a calculator. So basically, this is just dividing this range for us, and that's 54 billion. So it ha wasn't able to close above the 50% zone. So I suspect we'll probably be down here for some time at the moment. And should we fall back a little, well, we've just hit the 50% zone at the moment. So 44, maybe a temporary support zone at the moment. That's not really going to play too much into the long-term things. We just want to get some idea of uh, whether we're starting to stabilize or still on a massive downtrend. At the moment, ADA seems to be stabilizing above its $30, $35 billion level up to around $60 billion in market cap. Now, the last comparison I have here for Cardano is against Sol. And Sol's gone on a pretty decent run over the last couple of weeks after the crash of the last couple of weeks. And the rest of the market has either held steady or fallen away. So Sol is stronger over the last couple of weeks, but Cardano is still holding ground. We haven't come back to the old low, so that's a good sign. We found some resistance at previous levels, no problems. Uh, overall, these things can just uh, hold up and we might even just range trade between these, which is why I still like uh, holding Sol. And these two ecosystems are looking to go pretty pretty strongly over the, over the summer period in 2021. Speaking of which, we have a little news. We have the first cross-train bridge to Cardano from Nervos, so CKB. The bridge will reduce transaction costs between platforms and allow users to access features of both blockchains. So from uh, Pellerin, CTO at IOHK, we believe that blockchain technology will only achieve mainstream acceptance 
when end users are not locked into one blockchain. So the whole idea about interoperability is what Nervos is doing here and uh, crossing that with Cardano being the first cross-chain bridge, especially on their layer two, they're able to get um, these platforms running seamlessly across each other. So bridges like this are an absolute necessity in order to ensure that users have a seamless experience. And of course, why not? If you're going to use it, you want a seamless experience. Just recapping some of the numbers from Cardano over the last month or so, a uh, feat of over a million ADA wallets has been opened. So that's been achieved and 600,000 staked addresses, a total staked value of over 40 billion and then two and a half thousand stake pools are currently active. The recent announcement regarding the plans for Cardano uh, indicates August will be at an end point in terms of Alonzo's implementation. Rollout will be introduced in three phases, blue, white, and purple. So just pay attention to when the rollouts are coming through. This will be the time of around smart contracts. The big note here, and we've mentioned it on previous videos, unfortunately, people don't really get the gist of what can happen. Uh, just looking at in case smart contracts don't go to plan, in case smart contracts are delayed, in case there's a bug once smart contracts are out, this doesn't mean the end to Cardano. What I could see happening is if these, th these things happen, just being prepared, we could get a dip in the price, something again quickly that scares the market. Personally, the way I look at it is buying opportunity. And I almost hope that that happens to get another buying opportunity because long term, I think we've got some good gains coming up here. Uh, and in case things don't go to plan and it's technology, if you know, generally they, they don't always go to plan. If this happens, personally, as I just said, uh, buying opportunity. So I'm not scared long term. It just may be, it's not guaranteed, but it may be a short term thing, basically just preparing ourselves. NBC News calls Cardano most significant proof of stake cryptocurrency on the market. Currently, the most significant proof of stake cryptocurrency on the market is Cardano, according to NBC News. Cardano uses proof of stake. We know that. It's currently the most significant. Okay, so they've mentioned this quite a few times. I'm just bringing this up in case you guys are interested in staking your Cardano. I've got links to the Investor Accelerator staking pool down below. Just look for TIA. Go and stake your Cardano over there and, uh, and keep enjoying the content on the channel, the updates about the price, what's happening with the project. And that's just your way of supporting the channel if you so wish. You don't have to. There are plenty of other staking pools out there. But if you do, there's also a video link down there to show you how to stake it. Very, very simple process. A few clicks. Go and check it out down below now. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video, found some value from it. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. Catch me on Instagram for daily Q&As and of course, Twitter for cryptocurrency news. And I will see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.